My name is Jeff Keel and today I want to demonstrate for you one of the new features of Parallel Insight 2.1 called Dynamic Shader Editing. Dynamic Shader Editing allows you to, on the fly, modify your shaders, recompile them, and submit them again so that you can test out new algorithms, test out performance improvements, and make sure that things are improving and, and your rendering stays exactly as you would expect. In order to find your shader, there's a number of ways to do it. One way is to open up our shaders window. This displays a list of all the shaders, including the type, the name of the shader, the technique and pass name if you happen to have assigned those. But as you can imagine, there's typically a lot of shaders in application, so it's hard to find the right one that you're looking for. Another way to go would be to run a pixel history, to go ahead and find all of the fragments that contribute to a given pixel and determine which one you want to look at and you can either debug it or do dynamic shader editing from there. Another way to do it is to simply use the scrubber here in our frames page or over on the HUD, find the individual draw call that you're interested in, and then you click on see details for that draw call. It brings up all of the shader resources and render targets as well as a preview of the geometry so you can confirm that this is the draw call that you're interested in. In this case, it's the hand of the character from our supersonic sled demo that we did a few months ago. You can click any one of the shader stages. I'm going to click the pixel shader stage in this case. It brings up all the information including the uh, shader resource views, the samplers, any constant buffers including another one of our features here in 2.1 as we show you the variable names and their current values for each constant buffer. But towards the top, we have a link to the function. Once I click that, that's going to open up one of the edit windows from Visual Studio. As you can see, we've got the full syntax highlighting and everything you would expect when trying to do either debugging or editing of code. So one of the extensions that we've added for 2.1 for dynamic shader editing is you simply right click on the background of the edit window and select edit. What that does is that opens a parallel window where on the left side we have our original source code and on the right side we have our edited source code. And you can scroll down and you can see they're exactly the same at this moment because I've made no changes. And this is convenient because if you try something out in your editing and make a mistake or want to revert back, it's very simple to go over here and find the original source and just copy paste it from the left pane to the right pane. And also I'll demonstrate another reason why that's useful in a moment. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to make a, a very simple edit. Uh, I'm going to make a nice little syntax error. I right click on my window and I say compile and you can see that I compile failed. I can go to the output window and you can see all the uh, errors that came out from that compilation. You can see the information there. I'll clear that. And so all the errors are, are readily available. So if you happen to make a mistake it's very easy to fix it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a quote unquote valid edit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply make it so that the output color instead of being based on this hazed color will just simply be set to white. I'll compile that. That succeeded. And now I'm going to switch over to the target here and you can see that the hand is now white instead of being a flesh color. Now one of the great features of the dynamic shader editing is the ability to compare your original shader with your current shader. And all you have to do is just simply right click on the window and you can right click on the left pane or the right pane and you can say activate original shaders and that will activate my left pane and you can see now this one's the one that's syntax highlighted and this one's all black. Or I can right click again and I can activate edited shaders. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts for A and B to A, B between those two shaders. And again it's useful to be able to determine if that change that you made actually shows a, a difference in your rendering fidelity or if it's improved or, or hurt your performance in any way. Another one of the features that we have that's similar is the ability to promote a shader. And the idea here is say you've made some edits to your shader and now you want to try maybe another portion of the shader or another optimization opportunity. You can promote that shader and now it goes from being your B shader to actually being your A shader. And You can see here all my edits are now over my quote unquote original shader. And now I can make further edits here and compare it now against my first set of edits. And so you can do multiple iterations to, deter to try multiple different uh, opportunities for optimization or rendering changes. 
Finally, a couple of the settings capabilities we have. You can right click on here and, and just simply do the uh, edit shader defines. And this allows you to change the, the shader defines for that shader. And that's useful, for instance, if you have a couple of different techniques that are controlled by a compile time uh, constant that's passed in. You can go ahead and set those here. The other thing we allow you to do is from the project settings, and this is going to be project wide, we allow you to set the include paths. And so that's going to be useful to determine where all of your different include files might be uh, when you're doing recompilation. Thanks for watching this video on dynamic shader editing. Please download Parallel Insight 2.1 and give it a try.